Now let's apply the definition of conjugate acid-base pair and use it in a chemical system. And those chemical systems are called buffers. Definition of buffers, solutions made up of conjugate acid-base pairs which resist changes in pH upon the addition of small amounts of an acid or base. Now common examples, or the best example I can think of would be human blood. Human blood maintains a pH around 7.4. If it drops too low or drops or increases too high, a death would be the result. So what keeps the human blood in equilibrium at a pretty much constant pH of about 7.4? Well, in our blood, there are different conjugate acid-base pairs that will resist changes in pH. So I'll just list the three. It's the carbonate conjugate acid base pair, it's the phosphate conjugate acid base pair, and it's the heme there are many hemoglobin conjugate acid base pairs. Another buffer system is seawater. Okay, seawater maintains a pH about 8.1 because there are many, uh, there's carbonate, there's phosphate conjugate acid base pairs, and that keeps seawater at a constant pH of around 8.1. How do we know, or how can we figure out that a buffer will resist changes in pH. Well, there's a chemical equation for that. You don't have to memorize this derivation, but please listen through it. Here's a typical acid ionizing in water to form H3O plus and, you know, the cation and the anion. Okay, products over reactants. Take the log of both sides. Now, what I want to point out is this is this ion right here, H3O plus. We haven't talked about it much, but here's what it is. H3O plus is called the hydronium ion. When an acid ionizes in water, the H plus and the water combine to make the hydronium ion. So this is a one-to-one -one ratio. So in this course, we're going to treat the H3O plus and the H plus the same. So if they mean the same thing in this equation, I'm changing the H3O plus to H plus and then I'm continue on with the derivation. So we're going to negate both sides. Then we're going to take the negative log of p, uh, the negative log of both sides, but negative log is the p function. And so we rearrange everything and we end up with a Henderson Hasselbalch equation, which would be given on any quiz or any exam uh, in this course. So let's talk about buffered and non-buffered solutions. First we're going to talk about a non-buffered solution. Okay, let's suppose we have 500 milliliters of a 1.66 times 10 to the minus 5 molar hydrochloric acid. Now that's a strong acid. Okay, the molarity of the non-buffered solution before adding the acid was about this. Now over here in this, before we calculate that, we're going to add an acid, a strong acid, 10 molar, to the non-buffered solution. But let's calculate the pH before. Well, this is simple. The pH equals the negative log of the H. But the H concentration is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 5. So we just calculate it out. So it's the negative log of 1.66 times 10 to the minus 5, which is 4.78. We're now going to add 1 milliliter of a 10 molar HCl solution to this 500 milliliters of this non-buffered solution. Okay, first of all, calculate the pH after adding the acid. First you must calculate the number of moles of HCl added. Well, to do that, we, we added one milliliter, and now you can either do this in your head, move the decimal over three, or I'll just show the calculation. Cancel out the milliliters, so a thousand milliliters is worth one liter, so the milliliters cancel. Then, to cancel out liters, we have a term for that, we've got 10 moles per liter. So, in our next train track, we want the 10 mole on top and the one liter on the bottom. Liters cancel, and when you calculate this out, we're adding 0.010 moles of HCl. Now calculate the molarity of the solution, then write this value in the beaker in the diagram above. Molarity is moles per liter, so we're going to take the number of moles that we added 0.010 divided by the liters, well, again, 
the liters is 500 milliliters, but move the decimal over 3, and we get 0 0.500 liters. Calculate that out, and the molarity of the HCl that we added was 0 0.020 molar. We're then going to write that in the beaker, and that's the concentration of the HCl now. If you take a look, some people might say, hey, you're adding 1 milliliter to 500, so isn't the new volume 501? And the answer is yes, but if you notice, if you calculate it out and use sig figs, you get the same answer. Remember, we're adding small amounts, so we can ignore that, that amount in our calculation. Now we're ready to calculate the pH. Well, the pH is, well, now it's going to be the negative log of this. pH is negative log of the H. Hydrogen ion concentration is 0.020. Use your calculator, and you get a pH of 1.7. Notice. In a non-buffered system, the pH is dropping a lot. It went from 4.78 to 1.7. Now that may not seem like much, and I'm going to show you how much that really is, but this is a bigger drop in pH. Maybe you don't agree with me, so I'm going to kind of show you on the pH scale. So on the pH scale, which would be given on any quiz or exam, notice this is a pH of 2, let's just round it off, and this is a pH of 5. Now, if you'll notice on the pH scale up here, the scale is changes by a factor of 10 each time. So if we start off at 5 and dropping down to 2, you multiply by 10 each time. So here's what it looks like. 5 to 4 is times 10, 4 to 3 times 10 again, 3 to 2 times 10 again, a factor of 1,000. That's huge in dropping in pH. If that would happen to your blood, you would not be around to tell anybody about it. You wouldn't even know it. You'd be dead. Now, if you want to really, if you want to calculate the actual change, you would take the larger amount, which was 0.02 molar of the acid, divided by the smaller amount, and it's actually a drop, a factor of 1,200. All right, this was the non-buffered system. The buffered system, now by definition, it has a conjugate acid-base pair. Well, here it is. This is the acid, and this is its conjugate base. If we're going to fill out our little chart here, before adding any acid, because we're going to be adding some acid over here, but before adding it, the concentration is 0.100 molar of the acid. And the base amount is 0.110. To calculate the pH, which we're going to do here, before any acid was added. Well, since we have a conjugate acid-base pair, we use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So let's start plugging in. pH is negative log of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. Well, that's the Ka. Remember, the letter P means negative log, plus the log of the base divided by the acid. Well, the base concentration was given. That's this number here, and the acid is this one. So let's plug in. And then on your calculator, pH equals 4.74 plus the log of 0 0.110 over 0 0.100. We got a pH of 4.78 before we added the strong acid. Now we want to calculate the pH after adding this acid. First we have to calculate the number of moles of HCl added and the new molarity. But we're adding the same amount that we added in the non-buffered system, so we don't have to do that. Same as before, 0.020 molar HCl, but the Cl is the spectator, so it's 0.020 molar H+, because HCl is a strong acid. Determine the new molarities of the conjugate acid-base pair. Show your work above. What I'm going to do is kind of go to a different screen now and kind of show you the explanation of what's happening. Just keep in mind, we're adding a strong acid H plus. Well, H plus means we're adding more H3O plus. So again, think of this. This is at equilibrium, so it's level. Everything's perfect. But if we're going to add some more H3O plus, we're adding more of that. So the H3O plus gets larger, which makes the teeter-totter not level anymore. The equilibrium system, then to make it level, these two products have to react to make more reactant so that then the teeter-totter will level off again. We're adding more product, which shifts it reverse. 
it shifts reverse, then these two are going to react. So this one's going to get a little bit smaller. And the AC, the base, will get a little bit smaller. But when they react, they produce more HCA acid on the other side. And then if that increases and these decrease, ah, it levels off. It's now at equilibrium again. And if you notice, the base has gotten smaller and the acid has gotten larger. So when we added more of the acid, this base got smaller, this acid got larger. So just kind of keep that in mind. Now let's plug that in. Since we added an acid and the base got smaller, which is this amount, and the acid amount got bigger, but it increased by the amount we added. So we're going to add 0.020 to the acid side and subtract it from the base because as you saw in our little demo, these two reacted and this gets smaller in concentration. So the net result is 0.120 molar and 0.090 molar. We plug those two values in our diagram because that's what the acid and base concentrations are now after the acid was added and now we're ready to do the calculation. So the pH equals the pKa, which is the negative log of this, plus the log of the base over the acid. But the base over the acid is now the new net results. The acid was increased and the base was decreased. And we calculate it out. 4.74 plus the log of 0.09 divided by 0.120 is negative 0.12. And now if you notice, since there was a buffered system, the pH only dropped a little bit. We added a strong acid, so it's going to drop a little bit. Notice, not much. So we would call this a smaller bigger drop in pH. Oh, 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 getting smaller. Oh, oh a smaller bigger drop.